as we continue with piecewise functions. Let's take a look at how sign analysis can help us write a piecewise function. If I have a function like this, x squared minus 3x minus 10, an absolute value of all of that, first thing I want to do is I'm going to factor it out as much as I can. So I end up with x minus 5 and x plus 2. Now I'm going to take each of those pieces, pieces of that and let's take a look at x minus, where each piece equals 0. In this case, this piece will equal 0 when x equals 5. And this piece will equal 0 when x equals minus 2. Now that we know where each piece equals 0, we can start doing a sign analysis. I'm going to take each piece, I'm going to take the x minus 5, and which will then come up with this one, we'll do x plus 2. We're going to put a number line, and we know that something happens at minus 2, and we know that something also happens at 5. Because those were the two points where those equations equal 0, or those parts of the equation equal 0. So we fill it in. x minus 5, well, that is a 0 at 5. Now, anything less than 5, and x minus 5 is going to be a negative answer. If x is anything higher than 5, that piece is going to give me a positive answer. So I've got that part right there. Switch down to our x plus 2. Now we know that that one equals 0 at minus 2. Let's put a 0 in there. And anything less than minus 2, it's going to be negative. Anything greater than minus 2, it's going to be positive. Now be careful. It's not always going to be negative on the left and positive on the right. For example, if we had the part 1 minus x, if I were to, on the number line, that one's going to be 0 at 1. This one is going to be positive on the left and negative on the right. So be careful with your signs. Make sure you get that part right. Okay, right, now that we've got that part done, we can actually perform our sign analysis. So underneath here, we've got a 0 happens at 2. We've got a 0 that happens at 5. And we start looking at those three sectors. This first sector on the left, well, a negative times a negative is going to give me a positive. This middle sector, a negative times a, a positive, is going to give me a negative. And on this side, positive times a positive is going to give me a positive. So now we know that from negative infinity, well, let's write that in actually, from negative infinity to negative 2, it's positive. From negative 2 to 5, it's negative. And from 5 up to positive infinity, it's going to be positive. We tend to include the square brackets in the ones that were positive. We didn't have to flip. But the round brackets in the sections, we, had to, we would have to flip. It's just a mathematical convention. So if I look at it, if I were drawing a graph, because we can't have any absolute values, this section right here, from negative 2 to 5, is a section we would have to flip on the graph. So that part, we're going to have to write as the other side. So I have the normal, and that runs from negative infinity to 2, negative 2, and so union from 5 to infinity. flipped part, that is in between negative 2 
and phi. So we're going to use this on the next screen to write out our piecewise function. So now as you write out our piecewise function, we've got our normal part, which is x squared minus 3x minus 10. Now it is normal if x is an element of, and we're going from negative infinity up to negative 2, and from 5 to infinity. We have to flip it, so essentially putting a negative on it, if x is an element of, so if it's anywhere in between minus 2 and 5. I mean, this quick, a very quick sketch of this graph would yield between minus 2 and 5. The normal part of the, normally you would have a parabola and be like that. But because it's the absolute value and we can't have any negative numbers, that part would be flipped up. That's what that would look like if we were to draw it on a graph.